Hi, Andrew from SACS. Today we're talking about combinations of cognitive ability scores and how to interpret them. But first, why do we measure cognitive ability? Well, cognitive ability has been shown for decades to be a really accurate predictor of job performance. For instance, we know that it can predict job performance accurately. About 25% of the variance in job performance is accounted for by cognitive ability. Now, we measure at SACS cognitive ability with three measures, verbal, numerical, and abstract reasoning, and I'll explain a little bit more about what they mean. But if you average those scores, what you end up with is what a fellow by the name of Thurston called G for general intelligence. And general intelligence, how smart somebody is, has been shown to be a really accurate predictor of performance at work and a whole bunch of other things in life. So how smart somebody is, is a good predictor of performance in a range of different jobs from chief executives down to ditch diggers. There's a correlation between cognitive ability and the capacity to do a job well. Some of the things it gives you though, it gives you speed. So the capacity to get things done quickly, it gives you problem solving power. So people who are smarter are able to solve problems more readily and more quickly. It gives you trainability, which means that you can learn things more quickly. And also there is a correlation between negative behaviors and cognitive ability, which is to say that the smarter a person is, the less likely they are to undertake negative behaviors. Now, personality and a range of other things like values will have a big impact on that as well. But cognitive ability is a predictor. Higher cognitive ability, lower negative behaviors. Let's look at some combinations of results to see how you might interpret them. So you see this person's verbal reasoning score is strong. It's 88th percentile in comparison with the professional population. So that's strong enough to deal with words in virtually any job in Australia and New Zealand. You see their abstract reasoning score is also strong. In fact, even a little stronger. So the 91st percentile. So you'll see that the person's capacity to problem solve, to take an issue, work out the implications, and then to come up with a good solution, that's really strong in this candidate's case. And then their numerical reasoning score is also sound at the 68th percentile, and that means that we can expect them to be sound in terms of interpreting numerical information. So what this means is that this person shouldn't be troubled much by the cognitive challenges of any job. They should be able to cope pretty well with any job from an intellectual point of view. Now, as I say, there's personality and there's values which can affect all of this, but from a cognitive ability point of view, we should imagine that this person will be really sound. Let's look at a different example. So this person has high score on abstract reasoning, which means that their capacity to solve problems and their capacity to see the implications of what's likely to happen is very strong and really comfortably above population average, again, compared with professionals. Their numerical reasoning is about population average. And so what that says is that they should be comfortably able to deal with numerical challenges about as well as the average person in Australia and New Zealand who is a professional. And finally, their verbal reasoning is at the 21st percentile. So that's really below population average for most professionals in Australia. So in summary, what this says is that this person should be really good at coming up with new ideas. Their abstract reasoning says, I am comfortable with doing that and I should be able to do it quickly and effectively. When it comes to numbers, they certainly should be able to understand the implications of numerical data. Their big challenge will be in communication, either written or oral communication. People who have low verbal reasoning scores tend to be somewhat concrete in the way that they express things and frankly, not great at expressing ideas which are a little bit abstract or difficult. Let's look at another case. This is a person who's high in verbal reasoning, 88th percentile, and again, normed against the professional population. But when it comes to abstract reasoning and numerical reasoning, this person is really low, 18th percentile for abstract and 19th percentile for numerical. The challenge of a profile like that is that people with high verbal reasoning are often very credible. They have strong vocabularies, they're quick on their feet, they're able to respond quickly to questions, and in general, they can be very persuasive. Now, the problem that you run into with a candidate like this is that if the abstract reasoning is low, as it is in this case, and the numerical reasoning is low in this case, this person may be persuasive about ideas that are just not that sound. And that's the real challenge. So in a sense, it's a kind of a risky profile, particularly if you found it coupled with 
a personality that was a very assertive and dominant kind of a personality. A person like that could be hard to ignore, even though their ideas may not be very strong. If you'd like to find out more, don't hesitate to click on the links near this video or to be in contact with Sachs to raise a question.